The transfer portal just never stops for Syracuse basketball as Peter Carey, at the moment of this recording, has entered the transfer portal. And here to talk about it is Neil Adler from Inside the Loud House. Plus, we're going to get into the numerous recruits for Syracuse football and women's basketball. How do they plan on replacing DeAsia Fair? All that and more here on the Locked On Syracuse podcast. You are Locked On Syracuse, your daily podcast on the Syracuse Orange, part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Welcome everyone in the Locked On Syracuse podcast. I'm Jackson Holzer and thank you for making us your first listen of every single day here on the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. And we're joined by Neil Adler, an editor at Inside the Loud House. And right as I hit the record button, Neil, Peter Carey decides to enter his name into the transfer portal. And before we get to that, this episode is brought to you by Nissan. Are you the kind of driver that likes to push things a little further? Ever wonder what adventure could be around the next corner? Take the Nissan Rogue, Nissan Pathfinder, or Nissan Armada and go find your next big adventure. Check them all out today at NissanUSA.com. All right, Neil, what are your initial thoughts on Peter Carey putting his name into the transfer portal. Well, first, Jackson, thanks for having me on. Really appreciate it. Big fan of your podcast and I appreciate the opportunity. Um, not terribly surprised. Um, kind of figured that there might be at least one or two more guys, if not more, uh, on the 2023-24 roster that, that could hit the portal beyond um, you know, Copeland, Taylor, and obviously Benny Williams. And Peter Carey, an athletic big man, injured you know, by and large all of last year, you know, came back this year um just didn't get a lot of minutes and it's it's not a it's not a huge surprise that he's gonna you know hit the portal i I should say anyone that hits the portal obviously can come back if they don't see what like what they see although depending on what conversations are between the syracuse basketball coaching staff and peter and other guys you know that might not be an option but i wish him well he seems like a good guy um had high hopes for him here but he just didn't see the court a lot in um, you know, this most recent season. So we'll, we'll see where he ends up. Yeah, it's going to be interesting where he ends up. My initial thought is this does open up another roster spot for mm-hmm. Syracuse. Sure. Uh, they now have three open scholarships available with everyone transferring. That includes Elijah Moore and Donnie Freeman coming mm-hmm. in. And to your point, Peter Carey, just even when Syracuse couldn't, didn't have that dominant big man. He still couldn't emerge here. Right. He just wasn't quite on the level yet of maybe a power six starting center. Who knows where he goes? I could easily see him end up in a mid-major getting a starting spot. Sure. Proving himself there for a few years and then eventually coming back into the power six. But Peter Carey, we wish him nothing but the best. Now Syracuse. A little bit less big man in the rotation now. You got Naheem McLeod, Donnie Freeman, Malik Brown, but certainly in uh, William Patterson, too. Patterson, Let's not sure. forget him. Yep, yep. Certainly his raw talent or raw athleticism is there. Just sure. needs to harness that. Sure. But an open roster spot is an open roster spot. That's three available now for Syracuse. We'll move on to Judah Mintz. Who recently tweeted, we can we can avoid DEFCON one here, Neil. <laughs> Judah Mintz from himself. So if you're questioning the sources, it's good source. Uh, good source. Pretty good source. Judah Mintz himself tweeting out that he is not going to Georgetown. Neil, what do you think Judah Mintz is going to do? Have you heard anything? Do you want him back at Syracuse? Because there's maybe a little bit out there that say we don't want him, but I don't really agree with that. But what do you think? Well, the whole Georgetown, you know, rumorville on social media to me was just rumorville. I, I I never saw anything from any substantiated, you know, what I'd consider super credible sources. 
Um, and Frank, I, I know he's from the Washington DC area and all that, but to transfer to Georgetown, frankly, <laughs> would have surprised me. Um, frankly, I think it'd be a little surprising if he transfers anywhere. I think he's, I think just like last year, he's going to test the NBA draft process and, and go through that and then make his decision. Do I want him back? He was on the all ACC second team and led the uh, Syracuse in scoring. He's not, you know, he, he, he had his ups and downs just like everyone else. And you could, you could, you know, talk about his, his positive, you know, attributes and, and, and some maybe not so positive, but the average, what, 18, 19, almost 19 points a game. Why yeah, would you not he, want that back? I don't He doubled the amount of double digit games this season. Right. He doubled it. He certainly, he just didn't improve his shooting. That's why I ultimately right. gave him a B plus for the season because I was like, you did improve as a player. The numbers sure. say it, the mm -hmm. team improved overall, but the one thing that you really needed to improve on was that three point shot. And it's, it got worse. Yeah. Not good. And I was, and you know, in the off season at some camps or showcase events or whatever they were, you know, I saw some stuff coming out from NBA scouts saying his, you know, his long distance shot looked better. And, but yeah, he didn't necessarily improve there. Uh, you know, a little turnover prone, maybe, maybe sometimes tries to do force the ball do too, too, too much, but he's also trying to make plays. And he, I mean, he's obviously super proficient at getting to the foul line in terms of attempts and makes. And again, he was on the all ACC second team and led Syracuse in scoring. And I, I, I'd welcome him back with open arms. But for me, I, um, it just would really, unless there's something behind the scenes, it would really surprise me if he if he enters the transfer portal. I think he's going to test the NBA draft process, or or he could just declare altogether and and you know give up his final two seasons of eligibility. But I think it's either that or he comes back. I, do I, I? I think it's too early to tell one way or the other. I mean, I frankly, I haven't seen him in in any or at least a lot of you know uh, mock drafts for for this you know upcoming one over the summer. So. I don't necessarily think he's going to hear his name called, especially in the first round, but maybe he's just decided that, you know, it's, it's time to move on. But then again, with NIL, maybe if the, if the, what he hears during the, the draft process, if he hears that he needs to come back for another year, well, I'll come back for his junior year, um, work on some things and, and make coin and NIL. And, and that could, that could happen as well. Absolutely. You know, I, it's funny you mentioned that because I just tweeted out that, you know, unless the status quo changes, right? Judah mm -hmm. Mintz enters transfer portal. Judah Mintz declares for NBA draft, something like that. He doesn't have to make an announcement that he's staying at Syracuse. Like we could just wake up in the middle of June one day and just be like, huh, Judah Mintz is still on the Syracuse basketball roster. I guess he's just not going anywhere. Like he doesn't, unless the status quo changes, Judah Mintz is on the roster for next season. Sure, sure. I, I, you know, again, I think if he is ultimately going to test the the draft process or outright declare and give up his, you know, final two years of eligibility, I'm sure one way or another, it's probably going to come out publicly. But yeah, yeah. Otherwise, he he can just go about his business, and you know, that'll leave all of us wondering. And 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 obviously, that's a big part of the roster construction for next season one way or the other, which is why, you know, Syracuse coaches reportedly have, have reached out to a couple of other folks, including a point guard and we'll have to see, but um, yeah, as of right now, I don't, I don't necessarily think he's leaving. Um, we'll see. We'll see. Well, we will wait and see. And like <laughs> I said, we could just wake up in Jude and one day be like, Hey, Judah Mintz is back because he hasn't said anything. Yeah, cool. Great. <laughs> I guess, you know, we want an announcement because it just, of course. Makes, it gives you clarity. But at the end sure. of the day, as long as the people in charge know what's happening, I, we don't have to know squat. Like, I, it don't matter. Yeah, of course. As, us as fans, we want to know. And, you know, again, based on the portal and everything else and, and what Syracuse coaches may, may be doing, um, you know, in terms of looking at other folks. Yeah, we all want to know, but I, I don't really think Juno Mintz really owes us anything. <laughs> So we'll see. I, it, um, you know, it, it's it's a big um, discussion point on social media, you know, and chat rooms and all that stuff, chat forums about you know what Jude is going to do. And I, I, I personally, and I'd love to hear your thoughts, Jackson. 
I really wouldn't understand why um, a fan wouldn't want Jeter to come back. I'm not saying he's perfect and he needs to work on his three point shot and and maybe you know cut down on the turnovers or you know trying to force things sometimes. But I mean, he's an All ACC second team player. I don't I don't know what the argument is there. I I know what the argument is, but I don't agree with it. Right, right, right. But I can give you the argument, which is that there are people out there who will say that he is a ball hog. Okay. Even though then I counter and say two things. Number one, you want Drew to mince with the basketball. Yeah, sure. And number sure. two, here, I'll hold it up into the camera there. Number two, <laughs> he was only third in the ACC in assists. Like That, he, it, 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 exa- that matters. That is an excellent point, Jackson. Um Maybe again, sometimes he tries to maybe force things a little bit in the paint, you know, against bigger guys, but he gets to the free throw line a ton, scores, and he facilitates for others. So I feel like if he could clean up some of that a little bit and get his three point shot going, but he's a great, great player. Um, so I, you know, <laughs> I would, I, people that don't want him back for maybe some of those reasons, those are their opinions and I respect them. But like you said, I just don't agree with them. I, I don't get it. It's, yeah. yeah. Let's go find another all-conference start out there because those grow on trees, apparently. This week's March Madness Bracket Highlight is brought to you by our friends at Nissan. Each week, we're picking one team that stands out, a team that's pushed it further than the rest. Just like any of the all-new 2024 Nissan SUVs, these guys were able to take it to the next level. The Iowa State Cyclones can only be described as a pathfinder. They've been thrilling to watch and have really created a lane for themselves entering the tournament as one of the hottest teams in the country. They have a date with Illinois this Thursday in the Sweet 16. Take the Nissan Rogue, Nissan Pathfinder, or Nissan Armada and go find your next big adventure. Shop NissanUSA.com. Bracket already busted, tired of the same old daily fantasy grind where you make a roster, cross your fingers, and hope for the best, or losing on the last leg of your pickup entry, introducing the Better Together, the first cooperative daily fantasy platform where teamwork triumphs talent and you can play with your friends, not against them. Pick more or less on real-time player stats, strategize with your partner to boost your odds, and climb the leaderboard together. So grab a friend and join the social DFS movement, and hey, you can even play with me. We can team up and beat the competition. My username is JPH52. Send me a friend request and let's get started. Download Better Together now from the App Store and sign up using promo code LOCKEDON for a chance to win your share of over $1,000 in cash prizes. Remember the code locked on because winning alone is fun, but it's better together. Are you watching Fox Sports or ESPN on your TV all day? Have to turn down the volume with all that shouting? Make the switch to Locked On Sports Today, a free 24-7 sports streaming channel program for you every day to bring you the biggest stories without all the streaming. Locked On Sports Today brings you can't-miss analysis, opinions, and news, streaming 24-7 on YouTube or the free Amazon Fire TV channels app. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team, every day. We're joined by Neil Adler from inside the Loud House here, talking about Peter Carey recently transferring and Judah Mintz and what we think he is going to do. Let's discuss now a little bit broader in terms of the recruiting aspect. Mm -hmm. What do you think are Syracuse's biggest needs? Well, I think part of it depends on the existing roster and what that's going to ultimately, you know, finally look like when it's all kind of said and done, you know, and we're talking about Judah Mintz. If Judah Mintz does move on one way or the other, obviously I'd say a point guard, a lead guard, because you assumably JJ Starling's coming back. He's a solid two guard and played well in the uh, second half of the, the season. And then you've got, you know, a four-star shooting guard coming in, Elijah Moore from New York City. But if Judah Mintz leaves, I would say they, and obviously Copeland's gone as well, I would say a point guard. Um, and to that end, there was reports yesterday that um, Syracuse, among many other schools, has reached out to a point guard from Hofstra who led uh, his conference and assist this past season. So... I would say besides that, um, again, kind of depending on where things fall, ultimately, a big man. Uh, you know, one of the things that's fascinating to me, and, and, and it ties into, you know, Peter Carey. So Peter Carey's, you know, entering the transfer portal and, 
you know, William Patterson, like you said, has, I think has a lot of promise, but he's registering this year. Hasn't, hasn't played yet. Um, Munir Hima is technically a junior, but I believe I he's he, graduating. He walked during on senior six, night. Exactly. So I would assume that even if he has a year of eligibility left, is he, is he done here? I don't think we've heard anything one way or the other, but it kind of like with judo, we don't, you don't really have to say anything. If he's moving yeah. on, he'll just move on. But, but, but the, the larger point is, then we look at Naheem. So Naheem was the starting center and he played 14 games and then got injured. Is the expectation that he's going to be the starting center next year as a senior? Um, I, I don't know. Does he, if he, if he's being told that he's not going to be the starting center, is he like, peace, I'm out of here then, you know? I, um, I don't know. I, I don't have the answer. Yeah. I truthfully don't, but that's a discussion point yeah. to your larger question that, depending on what Syracuse coaches are thinking in terms of Naheem, they're going to maybe look at a center, but then you've got, and that brings us to kind of the, the big, big man conundrum. conundrum with Malik Brown, who is, you know, I've been high on Malik since he was in high school in Virginia. I'm from the Washington DC area. And so I've been following him even before he was frankly recruited heavily by Syracuse. And I thought he was just had a lot of skills underrated. Obviously it was only a three-star prospect, only a three-star prospect coming out of high school. Uh, in Virginia, but he he's fabulous, but he's undersized as a center. I, I mean, there, that's nothing. That's not a knock on him. He's six eight, six nine. Other centers in the league, way more, are taller. It's not. It's just. It, it is it. It's asking a lot. It's so I. You know his. And then I feel like I don't know if I saw you put this on social media or someone else did uh, yesterday. Maybe I put a lot on social media. Yeah, I know you got good <laughs> stuff on there. Um, but then that begs the question. In terms of Malik, so then we've got Donnie Freeman, who's a power yep. forward, and he's an incoming freshman, and Malik's going to be a junior. So obviously Malik is a veteran, and Donnie's an incoming freshman, but he's a five-star recruit playing at IMG. He's he's playing in the Chipotle Nationals, and he's ranked as high as number ten in the country. He's going to get his minutes. Yep. So I don't know who's going to start, or if Malik's going to be the center, and Donnie's going to start a power forward. Who knows? But but to, to get back to your larger point, I would say. Uh, uh, a point guard, depending on what Judah does, uh, potentially a big man, and then also maybe another wing. I mean, we have, you know, I, I don't think Chris Bell is is going to hit the portal, but I don't know. Maybe he will. And, you know, if he did, Elijah Moore is a ridiculous three-point shooter. He dropped 67 points on his senior night uh, for our Savior Lutheran in, in, in New York City, but he's an incoming freshman. So yep. if Bell did transfer – then maybe they need another wing player, shooting guard slash small forward, especially with um, Copeland and Taylor uh, moving on. And although neither of them are great three-point shooters, yep. and Bell is. So if Bell did transfer and then you're relying primarily on Elijah Moore and Starling picked up his three-point shooting percentage, you know, later in the season, but maybe you need another wing player, you know, in terms of three-point shooting. Here's the thing. I've said this before and I'll say it again. You can never have enough good players. Correct. Having a lot of good players. Good problem. Is a good problem to have. Yep. So for all those saying, you know, how can Malik Brown be on the bench next year? That's ludicrous. Again, you mentioned it with Donnie Freeman. He is, is ranked as high as top 10 in the country. Uh -huh. And don't sleep on freshmen starting in their first game. Judah Mintz was ready right away. Sure. People maybe forget that Carmelo Anthony was a freshman. Oh, yeah, he was pretty good. Um, yeah, he was pretty good his freshman year. I'm All I'm saying is that d just because someone is a freshman and Malik Brown is going to, is a junior and he's experienced, he's an all-conference defensive player, Sure, it does not mean that Donnie Freeman might not be better. And if you bring in a big man, like we said, Malik mm -hmm. Brown, he's not a center. And he exactly. tried his best, and he did an admirable job, but he is not a center. Absolutely. But if that is Syracuse's plan going forward to put him at center, you're looking at trouble again. I, I, I don't I, love it. Yeah, I don't. It makes me queeze, and then there's Naheem McLeod, and we tried the Naheem McLeod experiment. He's not a starting caliber big man. His best role, in my opinion, is – he plays 10, 15 minutes a night, which is what he was averaging when he was starting. Correct. And he comes off the bench instead. Yeah, defensive defensive presence, you know, maybe get a few buckets around the rim. I, I, you know, I don't I don't want to sit here and get into a back and forth forever about whether or not he should be starting in this and that, but he's a 
a capable center at you know a high major level for a certain role in a certain amount of minutes. I don't think he should be thrown off the team. But would I like to see a more dominant center starting for Syracuse, like Jesse Edwards to your yeah, of course. And How about Maxime Renault from Stanford. Yeah, that that dude's and there's a bunch of big men yep. in the portal. Um you know, a couple of them, I believe, were either recruited by Syracuse or Syracuse fans want want to see the coaches pursue. And, and to your point about Donnie, you're right. There are cer- some incoming freshmen who are ready to play right away, and there are others who are highly recruited, highly ranked, or, but maybe aren't. And Donnie, you know, again, he's been playing against the, the top competition in the country uh, at IMG this year. And before that, he was playing in the WCAC in, in, in my neck of the woods for St. John's, which was a top 25 team his junior year. So he's been playing against real – and then obviously on the AAU circuit with Team Takeover, they won Peach Jam last summer. But he's been playing really good competition, and he wins everywhere. So I don't know if he's going to be starting over Malik. I don't really care. I, for me, it's like I don't even care that much about who starts. It's about who's playing in crunch time. And I could, right. it, it will be interesting, though, to see – like let's say let's say Syracuse does have a, a, another center besides Malik, whether it's Naheem or someone else that that's playing to, in crunch time. It, are Donnie and Malik both going to be out there? Is yes? You know, could Donnie move yes. to this three? Like I love that idea. Donnie's and not a bad three point shooter. I'm not saying he's Chris Bell or Elijah yeah. Moore, but he's not a. But I don't know. That'd be a pretty imposing front court. <laughs> I don't think you would start with that lineup, right. but. If right. you're at the end of a game and you need size on the floor and sure. you are maybe even leading and you need some defense sure. and you have Malik Brown at the three <laughs> with Donnie Freeman at the four and transfer center at the five, Sign me up. I would take that all day. Amazon Fire TV is the place I get the top streaming apps and channels for movies like TV and for watching Syracuse games and for the Sweet 16, which is here today. Fire TV is your destination for sports from live games to highlights to in-depth analysis. Fire TV offers amazing viewing experiences with smart TVs as well as the Fire TV stick that you can plug into your existing TV that provides access to millions of movies and TV episodes, as well as free and live TV. Whether it's opening weekend for baseball or the college basketball tournament, you're going to want to have a Fire TV. Fire TV recently created Fire TV channels to deliver a constant supply of the latest videos from your favorite sports brands, all for free. That includes all of us at Locked On and most of the big pro leagues and college conferences as well. Fire TV channels lets you dive into all the game analysis, highlights, and more to keep up to date on all the latest in the world of sports, March Madness, NBA, MLB, and lots more. Not to mention great news, entertainment, gaming, travel, cooking videos as well. Check out Fire TV channels on Fire TV and Alexa devices. If you haven't checked out Fire TV channels, you should. Trust me on this. To learn more, visit www.amazon.com slash locked on Fire TV. Locked On has launched the first ever national sports 24-7 streaming channel on YouTube, and now it's also available on Amazon Fire TV in the free Fire TV channels app. Locked On Sports Today is here for you 24-7, covering the top sports stories of the day with the local experts of Locked On Plus, our national shows covering every league. Find Locked On Sports Today now available on the free Fire TV channels app. We're joined by Neil Adler here at Inside the Loud House. Let's talk a little bit of football. Fran Brown is bringing in a lot of recruits lately. Who are you most excited about? Oh, dude, that's too hard. We're, what, what class are we talking about? We talk, I mean, here's we're the talking, thing. We're talking about the class of 2025. 2025. There are mainly two guys here, Byron Washington and Luke Carney. I mean, Byron Washington, that dude is a load. <laughs> oh, my goodness. He's, what, 6'8", 380 pounds 380 is that what it says on his on his x page 380 i think it's 380 i mean i'll tell you um for it's a team a big that's, dude. that's a big dude for a team that's you know had its ups and downs in recent years on on frankly both lines but probably more you know you focus more on the offensive line yeah getting a guy like that and obviously he's 2025 so he's ne- you know not this year he's next year but yeah that's fun um, Luke Carney, a uh, big fan. Um, he just seems all in on the program. 
wasn't a hundred percent surprised when he verbally committed after, you know, he was among a lot of guys that have visited, um, of late, um, he's thrown for over 10,000 yards in three years, like a hundred plus touchdowns, like 16 picks. And he's won three state titles in Texas. And oh yeah, Texas is a pretty good football state. Yep. And so for me, a couple things, number one, I love the fact that Syracuse is getting some commitments. Now they're always going to focus on their hotbeds of like New York, New Jersey, where a lot of coaches are from New Jersey, you know, the, the DMV near me, the DC area, Philly, but they're getting commitments and visits and getting on final lists from guys in Florida and Texas and Ohio and Tennessee, you know, mentioned uh, um, Utley, you know, who's got yep. them in his final five. So, you know, they're, I'm not saying in the past Syracuse hasn't branched out to other, but they're, they're making headwinds and they're getting commits and they're getting a lot of momentum. And so to get back to your point, yeah, I love Carney. I love, you know, their first verbal commit in late January was, um, you know, strange, the four-star edge out of um, the Philly area. He's, he's really good, but they got, a, they got multiple kind of what I'd consider maybe a little under the radar, under ranked guys that have come in couple guys from New York, uh, Darian Williams. Um, is, he the, is he the CBA guy? Am I get, getting that right? Um, I think so. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. No. So they're, they, they brought in so many. It's hard to kind of keep track. I mean, of it's ridiculous. I was typing up some articles over the weekend and it's like, I'm writing one and then another, oh, guy, and I'm like, shoot, man, I got to like fix this thing now. Now, you know, it's and the 2025 class has a ways to go, but they've already got eight commits, a couple of four stars. They're ranked in the top 30 to 35. And again, the, that class has a long way to go. But they got, as I've written about and you've tweeted about and a lot of other writers, have, they've got a ton of highly ranked, like four star, top 200, top 300 national prospects that have either been visiting on unofficials during the spring or have officials coming up, you know, from late May and into the mid June. I mean, I'm not saying they're all these guys are going to commit to Syracuse, but <laughs> this wasn't happening in recent years. And I, I just want to say this to you, Jackson. Yep. I like Dino Babers a lot. I wish him good well. Guy. Really good, uh, really guy. good guy. It didn't, it didn't work out in the end. Fine. You know, they got to a couple bowls, whatever would never bash him. Cause I think he's a man of integrity. And I think, from a human being perspective, I just love that man. But I'm super, ex and I wish him well at Arizona, and I'm super excited for the Fran Brown era. But it is funny because, you know, you see stuff online and, oh, you know, they're getting great recruits, but, you know, Brown's never coached head coach before. And the other. Well, that is a legitimate uh, concern. It, I do and, have that. Yeah. I, I mean, mean their assistants, you, you know, maybe some of them have more experience than others, but. Yeah, Jackson. I mean, let's see how they do on the field. Yep. And they have a manageable schedule in 2024 and got hype and all that, but let's see how they do on the field. But all we can really focus on right now is spring practices and recruiting. We can't, the games don't come till later. So as of right now, I'm excited. Yeah. So am I. It's fun. Uh, just way too early. Quickly, give me a record prediction for Syracuse football next season. Sure. Well, I actually, I think it was last month, I did like a super early projection of their one loss record. And I had them in the regular season, I think at nine and three. Okay. But I, that's, that's pretty big. I, I, I can see one. them. I can, yeah, no, I could see them winning 10. I, can, I don't see them. You know, once you hit that 10 win mark in the regular season with the expanded playoff. You're talking about you know, CFP, right? Yeah. I, I don't see them winning any less than seven. And I feel like kind of the eight-ish is maybe like the mean or the median or whatever you want to call it. Tens maybe a little high, but I think they're going to have a good year. I, and, you know, for me, it's, it's not just it, – obviously, Fran Brown's never been a head coach, but he's got a really good staff around him. They've got a manageable schedule. They lost guys in the portal like every other team, but I mean, I don't need to go over all the guys they brought in, you yep. know, between the Georgia wide receivers and Kyle McCord and Diggs and everyone else. I believe they have a top 25 transfer class. They do, top 25 transfer, top 40 high school um, seniors. They have a lot of good guys returning, whether it's Gadsden and, and Wax and Barron and McQuinn Allen. So like the pieces are there, but it's, this is all on paper right now. So let's see how they do. But I think, They've set themselves up for a nice season. It'll be, it'll be, they'll be fun to watch. Be Certainly. Fun to watch. And yeah. Neil, uh, before I let you go, 
Let's talk a little bit of women's basketball here. Obviously, sure. their season ended recently against UConn in the round of yeah. 32. Definitely another step in the right direction for the program since sure. FLJ has taken over as head coach. How do you think they replaced DeAsia Fair, though? You can't. It's a good answer. I, 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 I don't think you can with one player. I mean, it's kind of like, this is not an apples to apples analogy, but it's like, how do you replace Jim Beheim? And obviously some fans wanted him gone for the last few years and that's fine, but still, I mean, come on, look at his, you know, Hall of Fame resume. How do you replace it? They got some other good players. They got some good recruits coming in, but it's going to be tough. I mean, she averaged 22 points a game. She's only season. the third all time leading scorer in NCAA history. Just you know, as a third team All American by multiple national media outlets, you can't you can't replace her with one person. You you know, but they've got some good people, and it was a magical season. Um, you know, it's unfortunate they kind of stumbled with a couple games toward the end of the regular season, and then and then got bounced in the ACC tournament in the first round. Because if they had one or one or two more games, I think they would have gotten up to either maybe the four line, but definitely the five line. And then they would have avoided UConn in the, in the second round, but you know, those games, it would have been a tough game no matter what. And they played UConn tough. Yep. I mean, let's be honest. Um, they were 20 point underdogs and it's a two point game with a minute two minutes. To go. Yeah. Minute and change to go. Yep. And fair did her thing and you know, they, they held tough, but you know, UConn has a player named Paige Beckers. That's a problem. Yeah, And, you know, one thing I just – I don't like that in the women's tournament, the first two games, the the four, the, the, the highest seed gets to host. I feel really? like – I don't like that. I, I think, love it. I think it's great. Well, I, I think guess it's really – it puts an emphasis on – it gives the higher seed more of an advantage. Because if you look at the men's tournament, and this is something – I want the men's tournament to implement this. This might really? be a lot of take here. Okay. Because let's – what is the difference between the four seed in the men's game versus the six seed? What is it? Like, really? Like, not a lot. It, it It's minute. It is. Especially it is. because the talent gap in the men's game is a lot closer. Right, right. So that's why right. you see more upset in it. So yeah. why not give that extra incentive to get a high seed in the tournament? Okay. I, I think, mean, that's a, hey. that's, a, that's a fair argument. I mean, I, I just... It just, I was watching the West Virginia Iowa game with Caitlin Clark, and I was just like, and West Virginia gave them all they could handle on yep. the road. And I was just like, wow, this is just like such an advantage. But your point's fair. Your point's fair. Anyway, getting back to, to women's hoops, uh, you know, I, I hope they don't take a step back next year because they lose Dyesha Fair. But either way, um, coach has them headed in a great direction. It was a great season and no complaints whatsoever. Yeah, I, I don't really have any complaints. Either. I mean, what are you going to do? You know, you, you take over a program that was in shambles. Yeah. Basketball program. Yep. Felicia Leggett Jack brings in DeAsia Fair along with others. And then their first year, they make the NIT. Right. And then in the second year, they make the round of 32. Doesn't that kind of path sound familiar to you if the men's basketball team makes the tournament next season? All I'm saying is that the blueprint is there, that they should be oh. in the tournament next year. Uh, Neil, before I let you go, is there anything else you'd like to add? I appreciate you, brother. No, I'm good. Go Orange. Go Orange. Thank you, Neil. We'll, we will be back here on the Locked On Syracuse podcast on Friday. Hopefully, we have some news from Judah Mintz, but like we said off the top, he doesn't have to give us any. He just doesn't. Neil, thanks for joining us. We'll be back on Friday.